Hi everybody and welcome to the push module presentation from Neotis. So Neoload allows you to test web applications that use push technologies. Thanks to push, your applications take full advantage of the client server mode while maintaining the responsiveness and ease of deployment. Neoload's push module is going to allow you to use dedicated elements, automatically create a suitable virtual user profile, and manage dynamic parameters for the supported frameworks. So we're going to test a web store by setting up competing bids, and we'll see how Neoload organizes the scenario to make the design more efficient. So we're going to get started with our recording. We'll just rename our virtual user. So just take note, Neoload automatically launches Internet Explorer. So we're going to create our first transaction. It'll be our home page, and we'll click through. So we're going to make the first bid. We'll just enter that. So let's use another browser, so not controlled by Neoload, to make a competing bid. So using push, the first browser is refreshing immediately, so this update is going to be recorded in Neoload. Now let's end with a final bid using the Neoload controlled browser. So that'll be up top. We'll just enter a new container and make that bid. And as you can see, it updates. So Neoload recognizes the push framework used, as you can see here. And we're not going to search for generic dynamic parameters. But the ice faces parameters are handled automatically. So Neoload creates a modified virtual user compatible for use in a push environment. And here's the modified virtual user. And it contains all the transactions except for the second bid, and we'll see why later. So there's the first and third bid. So now we're going to compare it to the original scenario. So the raw scenario is the result of the previously made recording with no modifications. The containers are completely disorganized, and there are more of them than expected, and their names are truncated. And here's a polling request. It wasn't initiated by a user click. It was sent at a regular interval in order to update the application. But it disrupts the creation of the first bid container by cutting it in two. The following container contains other polling requests, also sent periodically. And only two requests resulting from user activity, the click on the bid button and the bid entry itself. So the polling requests make using such a recording difficult. Number one, they break up containers. Two, there are too many of them and they make the scenario ineligible. And three, they don't allow for realistic behavior. The scenario is static, whereas under load, the actions take more time and the polling mechanism lasts longer. So now we're going to look at the modified user and the advantages it offers. So with the modified user, the scenario is properly organized. There are no interfering containers. So this is the push channel, an essential element in the modified user. It replicates the polling mechanism using a secondary thread in the virtual user's execution. Neoload groups all the polling requests into a single polling request, which is executed several times. So the various types of messages returned by the server are modeled using the push messages. In the main channel, we find the two user actions, the click on the bid button and the bid entry. And now let's see why the container for the second bid no longer exists. So we're going to look for the response containing the $20 bid, which was the second one we made. So we're going to flag the requests. So the bid is in the push channel in the user bean message. 
The bid was made using the browser, not controlled by NeoLoad, therefore the corresponding user action wasn't recorded. However, the browser update initiated by NeoLoad was captured and included in the push channel. The second bid container, therefore, has been deleted. And we can find the bid amount in the advanced parameters. So we'll go into our advanced settings. And now we're going to edit the scenario to make NeoLoad place a bet automatically once the price has reached $50. We'll extract the bid amount originating from the other browser as well. So we'll go into our variable extractor. So the extracted bid variable has been created and it contains the bid amount. And we'll add a condition to the scenario to bid at $50. Now let's add the page that allows the bid to be made. And there's the bid amount. So let's take a sum greater than $50. So we'll just double click here and edit that value. We'll end with a wait until action to halt the main execution thread for as long as the bid hasn't been placed. So we'll add that execution here. So now let's bid against NeoLoad. We'll use any browser. NeoLoad will use the validation window. So we'll start checking the validity of our user. And that the first bid is made by NeoLoad here, as you can see. And then now we're going to make our bid. So we'll place that bid. NeoLoad doesn't make a new bid, so now let's put the value up to $50. NeoLoad is now within the condition and the bid will be made. So as you can see, that went up to 60. So the higher bid comes from the push channel and from the condition that we set. And using the modified virtual user, NeoLoad can replicate the interactions found in push applications. And that concludes the NeoDIS push module presentation. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. We hope to hear from you soon. Thanks again.